Praise be Jesus and Mary, now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, so we give thanks today for Isabella, who will receive the sacrament of confirmation. No, she will receive, no, in plenitude, the gift of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit that grants us, that grants us uh, faith, you know, the virtues of faith, hope, and charity, helps us to live in union with our Lord. We have just listened to the gospel, and in the gospel, we, we've heard about two inspiring stories of healing. You know, so Jairus, whose, um, whose daughter was uh, raised up from the dead, and then the woman who suffered for 12 years from a flow of blood, she was cured when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment. These two persons showed great faith, great faith in God. Now, God alone, who can heal us of all our problems, all our troubles. We live in a society which has a lot of confidence in man's ability to cure the evils of this world, to create a better place. And usually, man thinks he can create a better world for himself without the need to rely on God. So we think we can do everything by ourselves. We don't need God. So Michael Jackson, the popular singer, used to sing, heal the world, make it a better place for you and for me and the entire human race. Now, even though Michael Jackson acknowledged God, yet he still said that we are the ones to save our own lives. We are the ones to make a better day, a better world. Even today, we see another example of this man's total confidence in his powers. So in the present pandemic, we usually hear in the news that we must look at the science, we must trust in the science, and that if we disregard the science, we will only have catastrophic consequences for public health and well-being. Even we Christians, you know, the church in general, we have lost faith in Christ. Instead of turning to him in our troubles, we turn to science, we turn to our own personal abilities, and we don't make any reference to God at all. Today's gospel teaches us the important lesson of faith in the power of Christ, who alone can heal us of all the terrible evils that may afflict us. What we learn is that faith is very powerful, very efficacious, especially when it is enriched by expressions of humility. Faith, in fact, is a form of humility. It is humility before God. It is the voluntary subjection of one's judgment to God, who can neither deceive nor be deceived. So we have Jairus, who was a proud and prominent member of the Jewish community, one of the rulers of the synagogue. Yet, in his time of trouble, he fell at the feet of Jesus, humble, in public, and begged in tears, my little daughter is at the point of death, come and lay your hands on her, so that she may be made well and live. And even after he was told not to trouble Jesus anymore, since his daughter was already dead, Jairus put his faith in Jesus, who said to him, Do not be afraid. Only have faith. And for his faith, for his trust in Christ, his daughter was restored to life. Then we have the woman who had suffered from a flow of blood for 12 years, and had gone to many doctors, spent all her money trying to look for a cure, but instead of getting better, she grew worse. 
she heard of Jesus and drew closer to him in faith, saying, If I touch even his garments, I shall be made well. And she obtained healing for her faith. Proof of this is that when Jesus perceived what had happened, he turned round and asked, Who touched my garments? The woman, realizing that she had been touched by God, publicly fell at the feet of Jesus and revealed everything. Because of her humility, Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your complaint. In the same way, when we seek the Lord's favor, when we draw closer to him in our time of need, let us reach out to him with humble expressions of faith. Let us reflect on our own humility before the Lord. Sometimes we make demands of Jesus, expecting that he answer our prayers the way we want. But it is important that we learn to submit in humility to his judgments and to conform our wills accordingly. It is faith motivated by profound humility which pleases the Lord the most and wins for the soul numerous blessings and graces. One of the greatest opportunities we have to manifest our faith is before Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament. The adoration of Christ, truly present in the Eucharist, is essential to Catholic belief. This is why in our churches, the tabernacle is placed in a place of prominence and honor, where the faithful worship and adore Christ. Adoration of Christ is also manifested in the way we receive Holy Communion with humility, with reverence, and with devotion. St. Augustine says, No one eats this flesh unless he has first adored. Because not only do we not sin by adoring, but we would sin by not adoring. The Church recommends that when we come forward to receive Holy Communion, we should adore the Lord first before receiving Him. So we may genuflect, we may bow, we may receive our Lord kneeling down. St. Augustine says, Therefore, when you bow and prostrate yourself, even down to the earth, in whatever way you please, it is not as if you are venerating the earth, but the Holy One whose flesh you adore. In this diocese, we have begun the year of the Eucharist, and our bishop has invited us to reflect on our relationship with Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. A key component of this relationship is adoration. True adoration involves both body and mind. So even though it is first of all an interior act of submission to God, since we are made of body and soul, it also involves an exterior sign of reverence. When you are in the presence of Jesus and the Holy Eucharist, behave accordingly. Do not be afraid to fall at the feet of Jesus like Jairus and the woman with the flow of blood. Your humble faith in Christ Jesus alone is what will save you, not science, not medicine, not human solidarity. As we continue this Holy Mass, let us also pray for Isabella who will receive the sacrament of confirmation. Let us pray that she will receive in plenitude, plenitude the gift of the Holy Spirit and that she will continue to grow stronger and stronger in her faith you know, in Christ Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.